Hello friends! If you're new to this channel, welcome. If you're one of my subscribers or longtime viewers, welcome back and thank you for your patronage. I would usually save this until after I had introduced Christianity, but since Christianity is such a new religion and most of my viewers will know the history about Christianity, I will go ahead and introduce this series. My shorthand for this series will be KT, so when you see KT, that means it's part of this series. This is the first series that I've started that has a definite end, a definite beginning, and a definite end. I'm just not sure how many episodes there are going to be. The Knights Templar, formerly known as the Order of Poor Knights of the Temple of Solomon, was founded around AD 1119 in Jerusalem by a French nobleman by the name of Hugues de Payen. Christians had gained back control of the city in the First Crusade 20 years earlier, and since then, it was the main destination for pilgrims. However, there was a problem. The roads around Jerusalem were known for robbers who preyed on the pilgrims. Thus, de Pien gathered nine knights together to protect the pilgrims. In the beginning, they had no money, wore donated clothes, and suffered from a shortage of new recruits and equipment. By 1129, at the Council of Troy, the Knights Templar had become the heroes of Christian Europe, and between 1139 and 1145, the Pope had issued papal bulls, giving the Templars unprecedented power. This meant that the Templars were answerable only to the Pope himself. Why and how did the Templars rise so quickly from humble beginnings? To understand this, we must first understand the history of Jerusalem. King Solomon built the original temple around 950 BCE. The site, known as the Temple Mount, had been chosen by his father, King David, and is reportedly the site where Abraham prepared to sacrifice Isaac. The temple also housed the Ark of the Covenant, constructed to keep the tablets on which were written the Ten Commandments. Solomon's reign marks the high point of the Jewish nation. A wave of invaders occupied Israel after Solomon's rule including the Assyrians and the Babylonians. Finally, in 586 BCE, Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonian king, ordered the temple to be destroyed and the Jewish people to be taken captive. The Babylonians were conquered by the Persians, whose King Cyrus allowed the Jews to return in 515 BCE and rebuild the temple. In the 2nd century BCE, Israel appealed to Rome for protection, but by 47 BCE, that protection had turned into occupation. The, Jew the Jews revolted in AD 70, and the Romans retaliated by destroying the temple. In AD 134, the Jews revolted again, and this led to the Jews being banned from Jerusalem. By the 4th century, Jerusalem was the holy city for another faith, Christianity. In 312, Constantine converted and ordered churches built over the supposed sites of Jesus' birth, death, and resurrection. It was also in the 4th century that the Roman Empire split. The western half ruled by Rome and the eastern half ruled by Byzantium. When Rome fell to the Visigoths in 410, Jerusalem became part of the Byzantine Empire. Jerusalem surrendered to Caliph Omar 
in 638, falling into Muslim hands. Jerusalem had become sacred to Islam because it was supposedly the site of Muhammad's ascension into heaven. This is a picture of the Dome of the Rock. At the end of the 7th century, it was built on Temple Mount. Islam started trying to push into Christian Europe with most of the Mediterranean and the Iberian Peninsula under Muslim control during the 7th and 8th centuries. In the 11th century, a new threat to Christian Europe emerged, the Seljuk Turks. They were originally from Central Asia, but had slowly expanded west, converting to Islam along the way. By 1081, the Byzantine Empire was comprised of lands west of the Bosphorus. In 1054, the Catholic Church had split in two, but Pope Urban II made a conciliatory move by rescinding Byzantine Emperor Alexis's excommunication, so a hopeful Alexius appealed to the West for help. In 1095, a delegation arrived in northern Italy from the Byzantine Empire to plead for help. After a week-long conference, Pope Urban addressed the crowd, calling for internal conflict within Europe to cease, instead uniting to fight Islam and return Jerusalem into Christian hands. With that, the First Crusade began. After taking Edessa and Antioch back, the Crusaders finally took back the Holy City on July 15, 1099. Well, friends, we've come to the end of another episode. This video was a little longer than I wanted it to be, but I did want to get through the brief history of Jerusalem up to the First Crusade and going into the beginning of the Knights Templar. So the next video will be the start of the Knights Templar. As always, I look forward to your comments. Um, my sources are in the description. My Twitter link and my Discord link are also in the description, along with my PayPal account. For this series, I'm going to be using an ebook. It is $9.99 online, so you can order that. Question everything and never be afraid. Here are a couple of videos that I have selected for my library. If you have not seen them, I would agree to do so. If you like my content, please subscribe. If you'd like to be notified, hit the bell and hit the like button. Until next time, friends. Bye.